Hello everyone, this is Mario8 here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to use every single Paradox Pokemon competitively and viably. I recently got top 10 in the ladder, so I have a pretty good understanding of what teams they're in, what items they use, and what moves they, that are best for them. Before we get started on the video, make sure you're subscribed, it's quick and easy, and you can always change it anytime. Also, the common question of the day is, what is your favourite Paradox Pokemon? Mine's probably going to be Iron Bundle or Slithwin. Both are very cute and I love their designs. The first Pokemon I'm going to be going over is Fluttermane. Now, Fluttermane gets access to Moonblast and Shadow Ball as its best um, stab moves. It also gets Dazzling Gleam for its move that hits both Pokemon. Though, usually this slot can be either used as any other move, like Energy Ball to hit Narganacle. It can also be used as Icy Wind, Icy Wind for speed control, Mystical Fire is its most common move, lulls the special attack of your target, and also does good damage into things like Amoongus, which can be a bit annoying, but also Perish on. Sometimes Gothit, um, Fluttermane can be used with Gothitelle to get, you use Shadow Tag and Perish on to trap your opponents in. This can be very good as it's not many Pokemon that are Ghost type in the format right now other than Fluttermane and Golden Go. Um, another move that's been used in High Ladder is Power Gem. This is for Volcarona, as Volcarona can easily wall Fluttermane, as Shadow Ball isn't doing much, it has very high special defense and it's resisting Moonblast, so Power Gem can be a very good way to KO uh, Fluttermane. Usually the items it uses is either Focus Sash, so it can survive um, m almost anything, because usually it's running uh, a very speedy set with uh, special attack, but that means you're relying on, you don't have much defense, so you're usually going to get one shot, but Focus Sash allows you to survive many hits. It also can help you in the matchup against uh, other Fluttermane, and you can also use Protect in this set to keep the Sash in position properly. The next one I'm going to talk about is Boost Energy. Now, Boost Energy can be used either for speed or for special attack, as you can get quick damage without even doing any having to set up. But with speed, you can also outspeed Iron Bundle, so because Fluttermane doesn't actually outspeed Iron Bundle, and Iron Bundle can use Icy Wind to lower its speed and then get something else to KO it. So sometimes Booster Energy can come in clutch to be an able to KO Iron Bundle. Also, Iron Bundle Special Defense is only 60, so Moonblast actually does Oko, even without too much investment. And the last item I'll talk about is Life Orb. Life Orb is very good because it allows it to, to be able to pick up a lot and a lot of Pokemon. It also means it doesn't have to run as much investment, and it can run something more like... 96 and 52, allowing it to survive things like Sucker Punch or Brave Bird from King Gambit and Talonflame. This is the set that I've been using for a while, though personally, I think that Focus Ash is probably the best and most reliable. For Terra type, many people have been running Terra Fire with Mystical Fire. It also means that you don't get you you lose your resistance to um, steal also by doing that. And also, people have been running Terra Fairy to boost the power of Moonblast and sometimes using Dazzling Gleam to be able to hit many Pokemon at once. And on the topic of Iron Bundle, I think I'm going to go over that one next. So, Iron Bundle, like Fluttermane, has a pretty good, has low HP, pretty good speed, and a pretty good special attack stat. It has a very good special defense stat, and, but for Iron Bundle, it's a very good defense stat, though a very poor special defense stat. This means, like Fluttermane, Focus Sash is usually the way to go. As for its moves, Ice Wind is, an, is a great move for it. Hydro Pump is also amazing with Freeze Stride and Protect. Though there's also many other ways you can run Iron Bundle, such as instead of using Icy Wind, you can use Encore. Encore means that your opponent has to repeat the moves for, for three turns in a row. And since usually they'll be expecting Icy Wind and it has Hydro Pump, which is a massive damage output, sometimes, especially next to Iron Hands, which has Fake Out, you can force many Protects leading to you being able to use Encore and making their, your opponent's Pokemon pretty much unusable. You can also use Chilling Water. Now, Chilling Water can be... Also, you can use something like Icy Wind, Chilling Water, and Encore as a very uh, supportive set. Though, or, I've also seen some things like... Water Pulse. Some people don't like missing Hydro Pump and said like to use Water Pulse for that extra reliability. Now, one other move it can use is Taunt. Now, Taunt can stop any Amoonguses from KOing you and it can also be very good against Trick Room teams like 
because Furigarath has been popping up everywhere. It also has a very good speed stat, and so you will want to be going max speed, so you can be outspeeding Fluttermane by one speed point. Iron Bundle can also be very good against Arcanine. Arcanine has been very prevalent in the meta so far, so using Hydro Pump and Freeze Dry against things like Gastrodon or other Amoonguses can be very, very good. The next Pokemon I'm going to go over is Slitherwing. This is one, one, of my, one of my personal f favorites, as it gets access to first impression, one of my favorite moves. So, it has a 90 base power, which is pretty good, but it hits first, but only for the first turn. The only sad thing about Slitherwing is it can't hit many things. The only sad thing about first impression is it's not very reliable against all the Paradox Pokemon. For, let's say, Roaring Moon, Usually, you'd think you'd have a great matchup into it, as first impression it does super effective damage and actually does one shot. Except the only problem is it can go Terra Flying, which is its most common Terra type, and just KO it with acrobatics. Also, Fluttermane resists it, and Iron Bundle has a very good defense stat. Iron Hands resists it also. Iron Jugglers has Flying type, so you can hit it very well. Iron Moth resists it. Iron Thorns resists it, Iron Trends resists it, and also Iron Valiant. So the problem with Civil Wind is, yes, it can use First Impression very, very well. The only problem is that it's resisted by pretty much every single Paradox form in the game, especially after Terrastalizing, which is pretty sad for it. Though it does make up for it with its other moves, being Close Combat, Flare Blitz, and Acrobatics. Not only that, but you can also use First Impression U-Turn, which is a very good set, as in, you can use first impression the next turn, you turn out, and then you can, next time you switch and you get it back again. Leech Life Leftovers is another cool set you can use with Bulk Up. I've seen this a bit on High Ladder, and especially if you go something like Terra Steel, or something like Terra Rock, which is another thing, you can usually just spam Bulk Up and Leech Life, and use, and use Brick Break for consistent fighting stab. This is a very good step with leftovers, and it can be used very professionally. And for its items, you can also use Booster Energy to buff the power of all of its moves and go max attack. And the last one would be Assault Vest, as it has many other great moves that help it use First Impression. The most common set would probably be Close Combat, this, and, and either Flare Blitz, um, yeah, and Flare Blitz. You probably want to, you probably want to run it very bulky, as most of its sets in, um, have to have it use bulk, as it has to survive another turn after first impression to get you turn off. And also, its speed stat isn't good enough for it to really to have to invest in speed, and first impression makes it the fastest Pokemon on the field either way. Next Pokemon I'm going to talk about is Roaring Moon. Now, Roaring Moon is actually very good in this format. It's won a lot of tournaments, though sometimes it can be just a little bit inconsistent against some of the top Pokemon. Uh, it gets access to Tailwind, which is a very good move that boosts your ally speed by double. Usually it uses Throat Shop, it usually uses stuff like Acrobatics with Terra Flying, and its most common item being Booster Energy, which activates um, with only Paradox Pokemon, and it gives them their highest stat, a plus one. And then this means, so Acrobatics power doubles if the user has no held item. This means after Booster Energy, Acrobatics is doing double damage, and with Terra Flying, this is an absolute menace. Uh, Jaw Lock is another very cool move, and it prevents both user and target from switching out. This can be great, because then you can use Roaring Moon with Intimidate Cycler, and just spam um, Intimidate with Roaring Moon, or even Spore. You can also take advantage of that um, of Pokemon that you dislike facing, Jaw Lock them, and then have your other Pokemon take them out for you. Uh, usually you might want to be running Protect, as it does have that 4 times Fairy weakness, and sometimes you want to Protect to get around that. Or you can even just use something like U-Turn or Crunch. Uh, another Terra type you can use with this is Terra Steel, and one other move you can use is Dragon Dance. Now, Dragon Dance usually isn't used with Booster Energy and can use pretty much with anything, even something like Citrus Berry or something like Life Orb. But these, this is a very good set and it has a very high damage output, and especially with Breaking Swipes. So Breaking Swipes also attack the foes attacks by one, and if you use Dragon Dance, Breaking Swipe is still doing a lot of damage, but it's also negating their damage back. This can be a great set to use, and with Tailwind, it could be a very good support also. 
Um, the next one I'm going to talk about is Sandy Shocks. Now, Sandy Shocks is very interesting. It's been doing a lot better than I thought it would, especially in ladder and in um, tournaments. Though, it doesn't have two great stats. Though, you could also make a difference for that. So, its speed stat's pretty middling. It doesn't really outspeed any of the Paradox Pokemon, except the thing that's good about it is you can run boost energy to boost its speed and be able to carry many things with Earth Power and Thunderbolt. It also gets Volt Switch, which can be very handy. But the finest set that I've seen is used with Gravity and a Sprawler with Speed Boost, which makes a turn it's faster, and Hypnosis. Now, this is a very annoying. It, it is very, very, very annoying. So they use Gravity to get Accuracy Boost, which means Hypnosis is 110 Accuracy, which means it will never miss. You get Speed Boost and you use Protect, so you can always outspeed things. And then you just sweep with Thunderbolt and you use Lumina Crash to lower their Special Defense by 2. And then use Sandy Stocks, Thunderbolt, and Earth Power to do a dumb amount of damage. It is pretty broken, and I see why people are using it. You can make um, it also pretty bulky, or you can even run Choice Scarf. Though some people have been using Choice Scarf. I tried it, but I don't really like it, because Thunderbolt has a ground immunity, and if you're facing a ground type, that means you're stuck into it. And with Earth Power, you, it has a flying immunity. If people terrify, and then you are just stuck into it. I think that would be the best way to use it, and I wouldn't really use Sandy Shocks any other way, except maybe to beat stuff like Go and Go and Murkrow. But usually, the best combo with it is Sandy Shocks and Sprather, and please don't use it against me, it's way too broken, it's really scary. Then I'm going to show you Great Task. Now, Great Task is very, very good with Talonflame. You might see this in High Ladder or in tournaments, because they use Earthquake with Boost Energy, and since it has a massive attack stat, it can do heaps and heaps of damage. It, bring, it brings pretty much every single Pokemon down to Sash at least. And unless you're resisting it, it can Oko pretty much anything. Um, and with Tailwind and Gale Winds, you're always going to be pretty much going first with Great Task. And Talonflame um, is immune to the Earthquakes. Uh, another thing you can do is Assault Vest, as it has a very poor um, special defense now. Though once, if you use Assault Vest and you probably put a bit of investment in to live stuff like Flutterman's Moonblast... Then you can run away with the game with stuff like Iron Head, actually. It's close combat and even Headlong Rush, which is a new move and it does 120 base power. It's pretty much a ground um, close combat. This is very, very broken, but not only that, but it has an amazing removal. Like, it gets access to Knock Off, which is pretty good. It gets access to Play Rough, so if you want to go um, Terra Fairy, you can use Play Rough to help with that. And then it also gets Rock Slide for the fine types that resist Earthquake and its um, close combat. Also, you can use something very cool is um, using Ice Spinner to get rid of Indeedee's, uh, Indeedee's Psychic Train. So your uh, Talonflame can use Brave Bird in Psychic Train because um, Psychic Train stops priority boosting moves. So that's probably the best way to use Great Task. You can also use Choice Scarf and not use Talonflame, though I wouldn't really recommend that as it can be pretty bad. The next Pokemon is Iron Hands. Now this, this is an easy S tier. It's, it's, it is disgusting. Now, I'll show you why in a second. Um, it has amazing stats, like 154 HP, and with a Salt Vest, it doesn't die. Like, it, it just doesn't die. It can, it only takes like 20% from Meow Skarda's Flower Trick, which is just like, bruh, that is disgusting. And like, it doesn't even get, sometimes it doesn't even get two shot. If you go like, max this and max this as like a very supportive set, you don't even get two shot by Flutterman's Moon Blast, which is crazy. Like, it, so the good thing about it, it doesn't die. Not only that, but it gets Fake Out and Bolt Switch, which means you can just keep on recycling Fake Out. You can just keep on doing that. It's like the new Incineroar. It's like Incineroar if it didn't have um, Intimidate, but instead got like Close Combat and things like Wild Charge or Fun Punch or even Drain Punch. Now, a great one, a toxic set, but this is pretty, like, it's the best set, but it's super toxic. You can use Drain Punch. And since it's so bulky and you have Drain Punch, you just don't die. It's, it's, this Pokemon is way too broken. Um, I think that's the only set you really should be using. You can use Rock Tomb or even Sword Stance, which I've seen. Sword Stance and Booster Energy, something like that, with close combat. And this can do heaps of damage to other Pokemon. Uh, for its Terra types, I'd say Grass is very good to stop Spore from Amoongus. Um, and even uh, Flying. Finds another good one. It means you don't have that ground weakness anymore. 
it definitely becomes an immunity. And, I can, and there's so many things that are really, really good against um, flying types in this format, which can make it a very good defensive type. Next Pokemon I'm going to talk about is Iron Jugglers. Now, Iron Jugglers I find pretty interesting as it, it's been doing well. Now, I don't like it. It's like, I feel like it's a worse Hydreigon because it doesn't have that Dragon type. And Dragon is a very, very good type. And especially with Terrasilize and you can do very well with it. But it's been doing very well. Um, it's been used with stuff like Pelipper in Rain Teams. And with from this and Drizzle, your Hurricane will have 100% accuracy. And Hurricane with this in actually does a lot, a lot of damage. You can use stuff like Earth Power. Earth Power um, takes care of most of its weaknesses, like um, Lightning, and also it has a very, very strong Dark Pulse. And it even gets access to Snarl. So you can go like Assault Vest, and since, unlike Hydreigon, that has that four times fairy weakness, weakness, this doesn't. So you can run it very bulky with Snarl and stuff, or you can even run it with Booster Energy to make sure that you're doing extra damage. Uh, usually, you probably would run Protect with these sets, and Terra Ground is probably definitely its best Terra. This means that it um, is immune to its weakness flying. I mean, its weakness electric. And then everything else doesn't do too much damage. You still have to be careful of ice types. Though usually with the rest of the team, you can take care of those. Really the most prevalent um, ice type being Iron Bundle. But since it has a pretty high special attack stat, if Iron Bundle isn't, and since you can run a Salt Vest... Since Iron Bundle actually isn't that bulky, you can usually one-shot it with like stuff like Hurricane. It also, not only that, but it really has a great move pool. You can pretty much use anything that is a that is a, um, a special move, like Hydro Pump. Hydro Pump with Pelipper can do massive amounts of damage. You can also change that to Terra Water to even make it do more. You also have Fire Blast, stuff like Heat Wave, Flash Cannon. So if you want to be um, taking care of those fer pesky fairy types, you can use... Terra Steel and Flash Cannon. This is a very good set and I do like it. Sometimes also it, could, it is paired with Pincurchin just to get that extra damage boost and it's used like Assault Vest. So you have a massive special defense set, pretty good speed set and also a great special attack set after Electric Surge. And then the next one I want to talk about is Iron Moth. Now, Iron Moth, you think it would be a very, very, very good um, special attacker. So at the moment, it's actually used with Acid Spray to help things like Fluttermane and Iron Bundle to get a special de defense drop by two, so it can just sweep the game after that. Usually it can be used with Heat Wave and Sludge Wave if you have Mons with Telepathy and Steel. Though I wouldn't really really recommend um, Sludge Wave, it's not super good. And said maybe use something like Struggle Bug, so it gets that extra damage reduction also gets Helping Hand. So if you don't want to use Acid Spray and instead you want to use Helping Hand, that is very, very good. Also, gets Dazzling Gleam. Sometimes you can run Choice Specs, though I'd rather you probably try and use Boost Energy. And since it, to make you faster than stuff like Iron Bundle and Fighter Main, you, since you have to make your speed higher than your special attack stat, which means you can't go fully invested into special attack. You have to go only... 132, and then you can invest the rest into stuff like HP or defense, depending on what you want to do. Protect would be the last move, and then also you can try and use stuff like Energy Bull and Grass Terror to get around um, Spore and also do good damage to Fire types and Ground types, which you don't really like. The next Pokemon I'm going to talk about is Iron Thorns. Now, Iron Thorns is Tyranitar one, though. I think the problem with Iron Thorns is it's actually worse than Tyranitar. So the main reason people use Tyranitar is for its Sandstream, which gives it its bus buff in Special Defense. And But the Iron Thorns, I think it went the wrong way. So Iron Thorns minus the Special Attack to give it a bit more speed, but Tyranitar never really wants speed anyway, and if anything, it wants less speed so it can get its weather up first in its weather matchups. Um, it even has a worse Special Defense stat, and it doesn't even have a better... Um, attacks that to come with that. So honestly, it's pretty bad. If, I, if you were to use it, probably use Dragon Dance and maybe something like Rock Slide and something maybe like Thunder Punch. Maybe you want Wild Charge. The Wild Charge is pretty inconsistent, I want to say. And you can also use Snarl. Snarl is a damage. It, maybe it could be good maybe with Assault Vest. 
But honestly, if you're going to be using a rock type, it definitely should be Tyranitar. Do not use Iron Thorns. Okay. The next one is Iron Trends. Now, Iron Trends, I kind of feel it doesn't get enough love, but also, I don't think it should get any love. It it has a pretty... It is, it is an alright. It um, speeds that. It doesn't actually outspeed Meow Scarter, though, which is its big problem. It doesn't actually outspeed too much. It needs to probably get to at least 180 to be any good, but its speeds that just isn't high enough. Um, instead, it doesn't have the... It also doesn't have the same power as Great Tusks, as its attack stat isn't actually that good. Um, you can use Focus Sash with this thing. Uh, maybe you can want to use Assault Vest, Booster Energy, stuff like that. or And maybe Booster Energy with, like... Max speed, so you can outspeed Fluttermane and then use Iron Head to pick it up. But it, it's not super good, and maybe you want to use Earthquake, stuff like that. Um, it, it could be interesting. Maybe Steel Roller could be interesting. Stealth Rock, I don't know. It could do a few stuff, but I usually recommend probably don't use it. it does get Endeavor, which could be pretty funny with Focus Sash against Dondozos. I've used that once, it didn't work so well, but. It's good against the Don Dozo matchup, so who knows. The next Pokemon I'm going to go over is Iron Valiant. Now, Iron Valiant, I think, should be much better than it is. It should be much better. It, it is very fine. Very fine. It's like one of the best offensive um, things of the game. It can pretty much, I think it super effect, it is effective moves into pretty much everything. So that's amazing. And Moonblast and um, Aura Sphere is very, very good um, coverage with Stab. It has an attack and special attack, so you can go either way. And also get stuff like Calm Mind, which is which is very good, and it can also even be a supportive set with like Encore and like Helping Hand, which is extremely extremely good. Uh, Wide Guard is another move that it can use to stop things like Dazzling Gleam or like Make It Rain from Golden Go, and it even gets things like Icy Wind or even Light Screen and Reflect. That, so it can be also a great support Pokemon. It can also be a great Pokemon that uh, does a lot of damage, and it even gets Trick Room. Like, why does this thing get triggered? This thing is busted. I don't know why people don't use it. The only problem with it is it doesn't have too much um, HP, but if you're using it with light screen, it can be pretty bulky, and if you run max HP, it's pretty good. You also get Imprisoned, so you can Imprison the Trick Rooms if you don't like the Trick Room matchup, and it just has so many moves that you can use. It's it, it's extremely good, and I would recommend trying it. Uh, you can The best thing for it, like other things like Iron Bundle and Fluttermane that don't have much defense, um, or special defense, you, Focus Sash is very good for it to let survive up. Uh, I think Focus Sash is pretty much the only thing that you should be using, but if you want to try something else, maybe you could use Booster Energy with max speed, or even try to get more damage out of your special attack. Next, I'm going to go over Brute Bonnet. Now, Brute Bonnet is like a Moongus, but sometimes it's actually... But when a Moongus doesn't do much damage, Brute Bonnet does way more than it should, so... Get Sea Bomb and Sucker Punch, but it also gets Rage Powder and Spore. Now, Spore can be very good with this thing if you want to run heaps of uh, special, like if you want to run heaps of bulk, or you can even run it super offensive with heaps of attack. Brute Bonnet can also be very good with Torkoal, as Torkoal can give it the defense boost and with Ferrigiraf to get it under Trick Room. So, you have to be careful about Iron Hand, since it does heaps of damage, and Iron Bundle, which also does heaps of damage to it. So, I think you want to probably run something like Terra Poison to get around those um, things that are Poison, or are Fairy and Fighting types, which do heaps of damage to Dark types. Uh, I think those are the moves that you'd pretty much only want to be using. You might want to put a Taunt in there, or something like that. But otherwise, it's it's it it's pretty much that. You can use booster energy. Maybe you want to use something like citrus berry. Um, if you're using Torkoal, you shouldn't be using booster energy because you get that boost from Proto Synthesis anyway. And even Rocky Helmet can be pretty good to beat the Mouse Shoulder matchup. The last paradox Pokemon I'm gonna be talking about is Screamtail. So Screamtail has heaps of bulk. It, it is the most bulky Pokemon. I think they've ever added to Pokemon. It's even more bulky than Shuffle due to it having a great HP stat, so it can be very, very, very good. Um, though the only problem is it has a terrible special attack stat and also a pretty bad attack stat. So the way you have to use this is using Perish Now, Screamtail can be very good with Gothitelle, since 
since you can pretty much never KO Screamtail, and if you run Bulky Gothitelle, usually with Shadow Tag, Perishon can probably trap them in and they won't be able to do too much about it. Other things you can do with it is using Light Screen and Reflect with um, Booster Energy so you can outspeed things and go pretty fast because it also has a great speed stat. Or you can use Light Clay. Other things you can use is maybe Mental Herb to get around Taunt as you don't have any moves you can use other than that. Or you can use something like Leftovers or Citrus Berry. Uh, you can also use Encore and Disable which can be a pretty good combo. You can Encore them and then use Disable to, not, to make them struggle. And then Protect can be pretty good with it also. Um, I'd say that would be most of it, except that it does get Trick Room, which is probably the best thing about it. So the reason it's better than Grim Style in some cases is that you can use Light Screen and Reflect like, like Grim Style, but you can also use Trick Room. Um, the only problem is it doesn't have that attack to special attack sat like I said. So you probably want something that is spammable. So you don't, if you're running a Trick Room Light Screen set, don't try and use Perish Storm because you can only use it once and then it's pretty much useless. And same with Trick Room Light Screen Reflect. So if you were to choose anything, you probably should be trying to use something like Disable or Encore or even an actual move like Dazzling Gleam. I hope you look, thank you for watching everyone. I hope you learned a lot from this video and please subscribe. It only takes a little bit and yeah, it's goodbye.